Hi everyone, Peric from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how to build a versatile dog leg rig or DigitiGrad leg rig. Let's get started. This rig is based on the studies and work by Bogan Loomis, but I've tried to port into Blender and enhanced a bit or at least adapt. A special thanks to Jim Kruvy, which has helped me to check out this rig and which is developing a lot of add-ons to help riggers in Blender. You can follow him on every social media. I will put the link in the description and you can find some useful tutorial on his YouTube channel too. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the back leg of the dog. You can see that the thigh and the foot bone are mostly aligned during its locomotion. And as a DGT grad, the dog is walking on the tip of his finger. This is pretty common to a lot of quadrupeds. While Rigifile offer a couple of full rigged quadrupeds, the back leg behavior is not 100% satisfying since you need to move at least two controllers to get a nice leg shape. It is still a good and versatile rig. We could try directly creating a free bone IK chain, but the problem is that the thigh behavior is too stiff and it doesn't rotate along with the foot. I've already built my deformation chain, so these are four bones. One for the thigh, one for the calf, one for the foot and one for the toes. I will duplicate it and move it into a second layer. As usual, I'm using the bone layer management from Finn. You will find the link in the description. As usual, I will rename the duplicated chain with the prefix TGT for target. I never work directly on the deformation bone. I always create a secondary set of bone that will add a copy transform constraint onto the deformation bone so that if there is any problem, I can get rid of those target bone and I won't be messing with my deformation bone or my weight painting. Here I'm first selecting the target bone, then the deformation bone and press Ctrl Shift to see and use copy transform. Now all my deformation bone are constrained with a copy transform constraint, so I can't move them anymore. To move them, I need to move the target bone. So now I will be building my rig on the target chain. I will be focusing on the inverse kinematic rig, but I've made a lot of tutorial where I show how to create a switchable FK to IK rig. I've just extruded a new bone on the Y axis from the head of our first bone to mimic a hip bone. I parent the side bone to the hip bone using keep offset, and I will create a new bone that will be our root bone. Then I will unhide my deformation bones layer and I will parent all the deformation bone to this root bone with keep offset. Finally, I will parent my hip bone to this root bone. I will start by creating the tweak bone that will allow me to add a stretch to constraint on each bone. This is something I've been showing and using a lot in my Art of Effective Rigging course that you can find on my Gumroad page. With the calf and foot bone selected, I will extrude on the y-axis three bones. I will unparent them and then I will recalculate their role by pressing Shift N and using the global Z in the positive direction so that they are aligned with the world space. I will parent each bone of the chain to the newly created bone the closest to its head. So the foot will be parented to this ankle joint, the calf to the knee joint, etc. Let's rename all those bones replacing TGT by control tweak. For better readability, let's go into the object properties and switch the display to wire. I will now add a dumpage track and stretch to constraint on each bone. So I will first select the control tweak, then the next bone in the chain, press Ctrl Shift to C and add a dumpage track and then a stretch to constraint. This way, the bones will be pointing and stretching to their constraint target. And since the next bone in the chain is the child of those bones, they will follow the previous trick bone. 
I will extrude a new bone on the tip of the toes, unparent it and then add a dump and track and stretch to constraint onto the toe bone so that we can also work with squash and stretch on the very tip of the toes. Our base tweak control are now created. We now need to duplicate the whole chain to be able to create the inverse kinematic mechanism. So I will select all the bone, press Shift D, and then move them onto a new layer. I will also move all the tweakable controller onto another layer so that we can isolate them. The new chain of bone will be our mechanism bone, so I will call them with the prefix MCH instead of TGT. In pause mode, with all those mechanism bones selected, make sure you press Ctrl Alt C to get rid of any constraint. Now we need to parent our tweaker bone to the mechanism bone. Each tweaker bone will be parented to the previous bone in the chain. Finally, we need to reparent the whole chain. The MCH toe will be parented to the MCH foot that will be parented to MCH calf and calf to thigh. You should use the connected option. I've been using the keep offset, but later on I will have to reconnect them. So just connect them directly here. Now, whenever I will be rotating any of the bones of the MCH, the tweaker bone will follow, and since the target bones are constrained by the tweaker bone, the target chain will follow too. Let's start building the inverse kinematic. Extrude the bone from the tip of the foot, press Alt P to clear the parent, and Shift N with the positive Z to recalculate the roll. In edit mode, we can go into the relation and search for the root to parent it to the root bone. In pause mode, let's first select the newly created bone, then the foot bone, press Ctrl Shift C and add an inverse kinematic. We'll set the length of the chain to three bones, and now when we move the bone, most of the rotation of the inverse kinematic chain appear around the ankle and we don't have that much rotation around the knee, which is not what we want. Before we fix that, in edit mode, we can parent our MCH toes directly to this controller so that whenever we are rotating it, the toes will follow. Since the free bone inverse kinematic chain doesn't work, let's select our constraint bone and set the chain length to two bone only. Now we need to find a solution to make the thigh bone rotating. And this is where we will be using part of the method from Morgan Loomis. I will duplicate the thigh bone and I will curl it up. Then I will select the tip of this bone and the root of the toe bone and I will press F to create a new bone that is connecting between those two. Once you have renamed them, we will go back into pose mode. I will select our controller and add another inverse kinematic onto the newly created chain. I will set the chain length to 2. Now we have two inverse kinematic chain in our rig. We will select the newly created bone and the side bone and add a copy transform constraint. So now our thigh bone is following the new bone from the chain and then we have our calf and foot that are following their own inverse kinematic chain. The longer this newly created bone is, the stiffer will be the knee rotation. The shorter it is, the more rotation you will have into the knee. So it's up to you to scale this bone in edit mode as much as you want. What I advise is to have the secondary bone more or less parallel to the calf bone. You should get a balanced rotation between the ankle and the knee. One of the limitations of this rig occur whenever the length between the newly created chain and the original chain doesn't really match. Sometimes the mechanism chain will reach its maximum length before the deformation chain. So you may have some knee popping issues, but we can reduce this problem by setting a value beneath 0.1 on the IK stretch value in the inverse kinematic tab of the bone option. When fully extended, it will smooth the rotation of the different joint and it allows us to get cartoony effect with squash and stretch. 
but since the inverse kinematic constraint is scaling the bone on its y axis but also on the x and z axis, we don't get a pure stretching effect. The bones are currently scaling, not stretching as the thigh bone is, because the thigh bone is only influenced by the stretching. This is because our tweaker bones or control tweak bones that bring the damped track and stretch to constraint onto our deformation chain are also parented to the MCH chain. So whenever we are using inverse kinematic stretching, they got scale along the inverse kinematic chain. This little issue will be really easy to address and we will do this later. For the time being, I will move those into a new layer for the sake of organization and I will create a pull target that will allow us to give an orientation to the knee. Extrude a bone from the newly created joint, then unparent it, recalculate its role so that the z-axis is pointing upward. I will give it a more relevant name, then I will go back into the inverse kinematic constraint and under the pole option, I will paste the name of the bone. Set the pole angle to 90 degrees to correct or fix this weird rotation and I will repeat the process on the foot bone. Add the pole target and set the pole angle to 90 degrees. Now when we rotate the pole, the knee and the ankle are following. We could stop here with this rig but I want to go a little further to be able to tweak the rotation of the ankle and have the knee following this new rotation. I will move the secondary MC chain in another layer, then I will duplicate the main MCH chain so that I have a new MCH intermediate chain. In pose mode, with all the bones selected, I will press Ctrl Alt C to get rid of any constraint and I will parent the calf to the thigh. Then I need to parent this new thigh bone to the previous MCH thigh bone. So MCH intermediary thigh is parented to MCH thigh. So as a child bone, it will follow the rotation of its parent. I will duplicate this new foot bone and I will press Alt F to flip it and scale it down. This is going to be our control foot roll bone and we will use it to control the target of a new inverse kinematic chain. So from the ankle of this chain, I will extrude a new bone. I will unparent it, recalculate its role, and I will parent it to the foot roll bone. We will use this newly created bone in pose mode to set an inverse kinematic constraint onto the MCH intermediary calf with a length of two bones. So the calf and the thigh are now using a new inverse kinematic constraint. Since this bone was created duplicating a former bone, it has the same IK stretch value as before. As we try to move the control foot, nothing happens. This is because we need to parent the control foot role to the previous MCH chain. So I will move it into the controller layer so that it's easier for me to select it. Then select the MCH chain and make it a child of the MCH foot. Now, as soon as I move the control IK foot, the previous MCH chain will move. This bone will follow. And since it is the parent of the inverse kinematic target of the new calf, the new calf will follow too. Now we just need to fix the behavior of the MCH intermediary foot bone. We need it to point toward the control foot or the root of the toes. To do so, we will be using the control IK foot and add a dumped track and a stretch to constraint onto this bone so that it will target and stretch toward the control foot bone. Now our advanced mechanism is fully done. We just need to fix the scaling issue we add on the tweaker bones. To make everything a little clearer, I rapidly built a very basic geometry so that we can have a representation of this 
backleg. The solution is super easy. We will just select our controller tweak bone. We will duplicate them and scale them down. And we will parent our control tweak to those newly created bones. This way, we won't be changing the behavior of those controller tweak bones. We will still have full control upon them, but we can constrain those intermediary bones to get rid of the scaling issue we have with all the inverse kinematic chain and stretching we have created before. And this is very simple. We just need to source a bone that won't be scaled during animation. This is a technique that is used in Rigify and this is very clever. The bone that won't be scaled or when it is scaled you want your wall amateur to be scaled too is the root bone. So we just need to add a copy scale to those intermediary bone from the root bone. And so they will keep a scale of one whenever they get stretched from the inverse kinematic. And then we will have further possibility to scale the different joint using our tweaker bone. So I will hide all my tweaker bone, unhide my root bone, and from the root bone, I will set a copy scale to all those intermediary bone. From there, when I'm stretching the leg, we will see that the leg get thinner and thinner. If I deactivate the constraint, we can see the influence of the inverse kinematic stretch make it eat bigger. And if I select my tweaker bone, I can scale them to make the thigh or any joint as big as I want. I've then created a couple of custom shape for each bone and move the root bone back under the origin of the rig just to have a better organization. And I'm done. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it will help you rigging your quadruped characters or any kind of monster you want. Keep on rigging, keep on animating and I see you very very soon. Cheers!